Welcome to our MathLinks webinar, Dig Into Equations, a Polygon Puzzle. In this session, we are going to see a fun way to build meaning with expressions and equations. I'm Shelley Kriegler, one of the authors of MathLinks, a common core math program for middle school students. Our presenter today is Mark Goldstein, who is also an author of MathLinks. We hope you enjoy the session. Take it away, Mark. Thanks, Shelley. In this session, we'll explore a context that helps students write algebraic equations and evaluate algebraic expressions using substitution. Here are puzzle pieces before they're cut up. We need to make sure that students know that A, without italics, is a label. It's the name of the A piece. And A, with italics, is a variable that stands for the area of the piece. And this is actually pretty important because variables are letters that stand for some value or number. Let's dig in a little more. To highlight the puzzle pieces in this session, we will use different colors, but we do not recommend this is done in the classroom. With my students, I made sets of puzzle pieces for each pair or small group. You can use paper, but some teachers like to have the pieces laminated or copied on cardstock. It's good for students to have some explore time with the pieces, just to get the feel of what they'll be using later as a tool. For example, students might build different shapes and see some relationships between the areas, even before you get started. Here's an example of two squares that appear to have equal area. What can we do with this? Since a goal is to help students understand how to write equations, we might write that A is the same as two Bs in these two ways. This is representing A in terms of B. But what about B in terms of A? That might be a good challenge for kids because they'll have to use a fraction. Here are a few more pieces. What do you think students might do for these? They might see that two Ds is the same as four Ns or four Ds is the same as B. They could go on for a long time relating relatively few pieces. They might even create new equations from equations they already wrote without even looking at the pieces. For example, if B is the same as both 1 half A and 4D, then 1 half A must be the same as 4D. And here's one that looks pretty complicated. You can really challenge students to do a lot of different things and they can get pretty creative. After students have gotten familiar with the shapes and built a lot of equations, we can explore other algebra concepts. Say we're given that H is equal to 36 square units. How could we find G? One thing students might do is to see how many G pieces fit exactly on H. They don't necessarily need this many Gs to do this. They can make sketches or move one or two Gs around until they see that six of them exactly cover H. After we see that H is equal to 6G, we can substitute in 36 for H and quickly solve for G. And at the end, after we've done the work, we want to make sure units are clearly labeled in the solution. After doing this, what if we wanted to find one third of J? Since we already know that H is 36 and we found that G equals 6, we could build a rectangle H and two Gs that is exactly equal to J, and then substituting known values into this equation, we find that J is 48, and then one third J is equal to 16. We can help un students understand that a variable might be redefined. Here, we change the value of H to 18 square units, and then find that G is equal to three. This redefining of a variable might be confusing at first, but remember that in a textbook, there may be several equations with an X as the unknown on the same page, and those equations don't all have the same solution. Students need to know that values can change, and they do all the time. Here's something else we could try. Ask students to justify 
whether an equation is true or false. One way might be to create polygons to represent each expression. Since these are congruent, then the equation must be true. Students might also choose a value for any single variable, find the corresponding values of all the other variables, and then substitute them into the equation to see if both sides are equal. We'll leave that for you and your students to try. In this session, we dug into equations and expressions using a polygon puzzle. We even uncovered an opportunity for mathematical justification. We hope you found some ideas and suggestions that are helpful. To get the handouts for the puzzle pieces and a worksheet, go to our website. Thank you, Mark. That was really great, and it's one of my favorite problems as well. The Center for Mathematics and Teaching is the home for all MathLinks programs. These include comprehensive curriculum for grades 6 through 8, customized intervention and supplementary programs, and professional development. For more information about our programs, please visit our website at www.mathandteaching.org. We hope you enjoyed the session and will try it with your students. Please feel free to contact us anytime. Thanks for joining and see you again next time.